Welcome to Physical Activity and Exercise. My name's Annette Henderson. I'm a Chartered Physiotherapist in the Our Hearts, Our Minds team in the Western Trust. I've worked in cardiac rehab in Altengelven Hospital for 10 years, and I lead a fantastic team of physiotherapists and exercise specialists in the assessment and delivery of exercise for patients and families with cardiac conditions. I'm passionate about helping patients to understand their condition better, to improve their fitness, and for them to have the best health that they can. Hopefully this presentation on physical activity and exercise will help you understand how vital it is for your heart health and well-being. After a heart event, you may have lots of questions about what activity you can safely do. You may have been exercising for years, you may be new to exercise, or you may have concerns about starting to exercise. Your heart is a muscle, and like any other muscle, it needs exercise to keep it strong. Strong muscles helps the heart to pump blood more efficiently around the body. This helps reduce the strain on the heart and also reduces the risk of a heart event. Exercise makes your heart more efficient and improves well-being. If I could give you a tablet that in small doses helps you to live longer, improves the blood flow around the heart, reduces disability, reduces your blood pressure, improves your bone health, helps you to sleep better, helps reduce and treat depression, reduces the side of ageing with little or no side effects. Would you take it? Now, unfortunately, there is no such tablet, but exercise will give you all those benefits and more. Reduced physical activity is a major risk factor in coronary artery disease. It's important that we aim to be active daily, but how much should we be doing? 10 minutes once a day, is that enough? More than 150 minutes of moderate intensity per week, so that's something like going for a brisk walk, maybe a cycle or something along those lines. Walk into the shop and back, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Resistance exercises, strengthening or lifting, once a week. Resistance exercises more than twice a week. What do you think? How did you do? Were you right? In addition to the 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity a week and two days of strength training, the guidelines also recommend that we reduce our sedentary or inactive time and also do balance exercises twice a week. Even if you don't reach these minimum targets, you can still benefit from doing more activity. So our aim is to be more active. What happens to our bodies with too much sitting? What happens to our blood pressure? Our blood pressure increases. What happens to our body weight? Yes, you're right, our body weight also increases. And our risk of diabetes? Yes, our risk of diabetes also increases. When you're inactive and your muscles aren't working, your efficiency of your body to use insulin goes down. This means you have a higher risk of developing diabetes. And the good news is less sitting can reverse this. And finally, the risk of heart disease. Yes, you're right, also increases. So it's really important that we reduce the time we spend sitting. Let's look at your day. How much do you sit? Do you watch a lot of TV? Or maybe have a long commute to work? Do you go on the computer? Do you watch a lot of sport, maybe at home, on the TV or from the sidelines? Or do you spend a long time checking emails and browsing the internet? What ways could you reduce your sitting time? Starting a new exercise regime can feel daunting, but hopefully you're beginning to see that there are many benefits to doing exercise. Any activity is good, even small. Start off for a small walk. How far can you go? Can you walk continuously? And can you keep that going? When it starts to feel easier, can you progress that and increase it? If you start small and build up, you're more likely to stay on track and avoid injury. No matter how slow you go, you're still lapping everyone on the couch. Once you can comfortably walk for 20 to 30 minutes, it's a good idea to try and start structuring your exercise. Start with a warm up. Gradually take your body from a period of rest to exercise. That will get your heart rate increased, your breathing gradually up, and your temperature warmer as well. 
This helps prepare the body and get it ready for exercise. Then move on to the conditioning phase. This is where you want to be a little bit out of breath, but still able to hold a conversation. And it's where your most health benefits are gained from. So you're trying to sustain in this time without stopping and starting. When you're finishing the exercise, you want to go to a cool down. This should mirror your warm up, should gradually take your heart rate and breathing back down to resting again. This may seem a lot, but it's 15 minutes warming up, just 30 minutes of a brisk walk or moderate intensity and a 10 minute cool down. If you do that five times a week, that will give you your 150 minutes of moderate intensity per week. So it's definitely achievable. You may have seen this chart before. This chart helps you exercise at the right level. When you're at your conditioning phase, you really want to be working at moderate intensity. Some of you will be exercising for years, some of you will be new to exercise, and it's important that you listen to your body. Moderate intensity is somewhere between light and somewhat hard. You should ask yourself, how heavy is your breathing? It's fine for your breathing rate to go up, but is it still easy to talk? You should be able to hold a conversation. How tired am I after? Could you repeat that activity after you've done a cool down? It's usually a good indication. Most health benefits will come at the moderate intensity. It's important that you don't under or over exercise. It's important that you exercise at the right level for you. You're not in competition with anyone else. Choose appropriate clothing and footwear for the weather conditions. A pair of flat shoes and some loose clothing is ideal. Wait at least one hour after eating a meal before exercising. Take your GTN spray with you if you have one. Make sure you include a warm up and a cool down. If you experience chest tightness, dizziness, palpitations and exhaustion, they can all be warning signs that the exercise is too hard. If you experience these, slow down, stop and seek medical advice. If you've been feeling unwell or have a temperature, it's really important that you avoid exercise. If you've been out of exercise for a few days, you may wish to build this back up gradually before you resume your current plan. So we know exercise is important, but is it easy? Do we follow the recommended exercise guidelines? If not, why not? What stops us being able to adopt healthy behavior changes? It's not easy. What are your barriers to exercise? So what reasons do you have? Can you think of maybe two or three that stop you from exercising? Let's have a look and see if we can solve some of the common barriers to exercise. I do not have time. This is a common barrier we hear. Are you back at work? Could you walk maybe as part of your lunch break? Or could you find another time? Maybe park a little bit further away and walk to work. Is there any non-essential activities that you can change, such as sitting watching TV? Do you have to take the car for short trips? Or maybe you can walk. It's very easy to start building it in once you get started. I'm too tired. This is another one we hear. Are you a morning person, an afternoon person, or an evening person? Do you wake up full of beans or do you find it takes you a little part of the day to get going? Try and fit your exercise in when you have the most energy, and this may help. The weather. Unfortunately, we don't live in the best climate, and it usually rains. Do you have a coat with a hood? Maybe take those waterproofs out. Or maybe a home exercise plan might be better for you. Fear, I don't know what to do. Hopefully this will help. Also speak to friends and families who have made a successful health behaviour change. That may also help you. I have no support. Tell friends and family about your new plan. We're also here to help support you. Maybe join an activity or a sports club that has similar or common interest to yourself. Or find a walking buddy or a friend and again that may help to motivate you. I lack willpower. Can you identify what triggers this? Try and avoid negative self-talk. Give yourself some positive and encouraging words. 
even a little exercise can help. Try and remember just how good you feel after the exercise. It's too expensive. You don't need an expensive gym membership or sports club membership. Walking costs very little and you can do it straight from your front door. You can use household items as weights and that also helps. Is there really any excuse not to start? Exercise should be fun and enjoyed. How do you keep track of your activities? There are many, many tools that can help you do this. Do you have a mobile phone? What apps do you have on that phone? Some will track exercise, some will track stair climbing, sitting time, there's lots of things that they can do. If you're not sure, ask somebody to help you find it on the phone. Watches and pedometers are also useful tools. They can again monitor your step count and give you a goal and a target to work for which can help with motivation. If technology is not your thing, maybe you're more pen and paper, that's fine. A walking diary is equally good. Again, jot down what you've done that day and that can help you see gaps in your activity and how you can improve on this. Are you good on a computer? Maybe you might like to design your own spreadsheet to keep a track of your activities for that day. Exercise equipment, such as exercise bikes or gym equipment, is also another way that you can track. If you can, try and set goals for yourself. This will help you plan what you're going to do and make sure that you don't do too much or too little. With so many tools out there, it's important that you try and find out what works for you. Here are some apps to help keep you on track. Active 10, walk your way to health. It might be step goals, such as from your watch. You might want to use some of the map my range, such as map my walk, and that will draw you a graph out. Or if you're a cyclist, Swift or Trainer Road, or even some of the map my rides are also good options to help. By tracking your activity, it'll help you see a pattern. Which days are you more active on and why? So to finish with the key messages, physical activity and exercise are hugely important to our heart health. It's important that we do optimal and regular exercise as that is the most powerful. Try and minimize the amount of time you spend sitting. Start small and build up. Consider the many tools available that can help you keep track and to be more active. Making changes takes time and long-term commitment, but it's worth investing the time.